Welcome to Stock Talk, the new Stockhouse podcast series that brings you behind the scenes insights into trending topics from capital markets, influencers, and entrepreneurs broadcasting from the heart of the financial district in beautiful downtown Vancouver. Welcome to Stockhouse Media and the Stock Talk podcast, where we help listeners and investors understand more about investment opportunities in capital markets. I'm Dave Jackson. Today, we're glad to be joined by company CEO Joe Dales of RH Accelerator, an incubator company helping companies succeed. Joe is an expert in the agriculture and food industry, helping farmers be more productive and profitable. Joe is also a co-founder of Farms.com Limited, providing farmers, ranchers, agribusinesses, and other agriculture producers news and information on the agriculture industry. He's an innovative business leader and industry expert. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Joe. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. Yeah, no, we're, we're fine. Uh, just uh, trying to adapt and be productive. Excellent. Now, for our listeners that may be discovering you for the first time, can you uh, please give us a little background history about yourself and a brief overview yeah. of, of RH Accelerator and what it's all about? Okay. Well, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've had a great career in the, uh, the agriculture and food sector. Uh, my family is pretty involved in agriculture. My brother's a partner in a large farming operation, and uh, I was brought up in uh, in the farming uh, community in Ontario here. Uh, but when I went to university, I, uh, I kind of fell into agribusiness and spent the first part of my career working for some of the great life science companies, uh, Pfizer, Syngenta, and BASF. And um, they trained me really well, and uh, uh, eventually I turned... Uh, Kind of thought I would try being an entrepreneur. So several years ago, we uh, we started a, a couple of uh, dot coms that have grown successfully: uh, Farms dot com and AgCareers dot com. And uh, now I'm more of an entrepreneur uh, slash investor and uh, on the board of several companies in the agricultural space. And about uh, about a year ago, I took a finished a succession plan at Farms dot com, where I'm still a board member and major shareholder, but I wanted to work with early stage innovative companies. Uh, uh, we got a lot of help when we were starting farms.com uh, in the very early stages of the internet. And uh, so I wanted to uh, focus some time and effort and try to leverage up my experience and skills and my network uh, uh, with some of these new wonderful technologies and great founders that uh, I was coming across. So we're, we're basically patient kind of value-adding investors, and uh, we like working with early-stage innovative companies and founders, and I really am a big fan of Y Combinator out of uh, Silicon Valley, and so uh, trying to use some of their models that they've done really well to to help grow and uh, uh, improve the, the survivability of some of these, uh, these early-stage companies. As a co-founder of Farms.com, can you tell us what your mission was in creating the website to begin with? Yeah, well, I, I thought the internet would be really valuable to farmers uh, uh, when I first saw it because uh, they're, they're rural and they have, they have great information needs. And so we started out just trying to build innovative products and services. And the company's uh, morphed over the years. So we have about 100 staff across North America and Europe. And um, the core businesses are we've built to kind of the Indeed uh, for the agriculture and food sector, and we're the major player in human resource like job boards. So agcareers.com and careersandfood.com are uh, two uh, lead uh, websites there. And then we built off a number of really uh, diversified media offerings for farmers. So, you know, we have a, a pretty wide digital platform with a lot of different uh, applications. And then We've acquired a number of print publications because we wanted more content, and and now we're offering events and uh, you know subscription models and things like that. So, company's doing really well. Uh, uh, as I say, about 100 staff and um, both Canada and the U.S. Great stuff. Now, as an expert in the agriculture and agritech sectors, can you tell us you know where you see the industry going? Yeah, we're we're really excited. The, the, the ag industry is very, uh, it's very complex, it's very large, um, predominantly rural, you know, especially with the farmers. And so they've been a little slower at adopting some of the technologies. 
And uh, but a lot of the all the information technology, um, you know, I think will have some applicability to improving productivity on the farm. So I'm watching a lot of the whole IT uh, trends, um, AI, machine learning, you know, robotics and automation. I find very fascinating right now, and I think that's going to be a big area. Um, farmers, you know, they typically use a lot of equipment, and they're very quick to adopt uh, new technologies there. Um, sensors are becoming cheaper and pervasive. So the whole internet of things uh, is going to create all kinds of new tools that help farmers, you know, especially know what's going on in their fields and be able to check it from their, uh, you know, from their smartphones. E-commerce is another one that I think is going to continue to explode and, and things like uh, what we're going through now are, are only going to increase the uh, uh, adoption rate on some of those technologies. Joe, companies that are focusing on reducing their carbon footprint with technology really seem to be trending. Can you speak to that and the new green revolution? Yeah, that's another area that I'm, I'm finding really fascinating is just, you know, all the whole bioeconomy, uh, using plants to maybe replace some of the fossil fuels. And, and so uh, technology like biotechnology is, is growing leaps and bounds as we, uh, understand what's going on at the DNA level and, and so on. So I find those, those technologies, uh, you know, there's all kinds of little startups that are, are uh, you know, finding some of these niche markets that I think are going to be pretty exciting. And that's not too far away from, you know, even the cannabis and hemp business. Uh, those are plants where we're starting to figure out that, uh, uh, you know, they need uh, agron- agronomics and genetics and so on. And so, you know, it's taken a few years to get up and running, but I, I can see a lot of, you know, really innovative companies popping out of, uh, you know, the innovation in some of these sectors. And, you know, the whole the whole um, trying to replace fossil fuels, I think, will drive that, even though it's maybe disrupted a little bit here uh, during uh, the current uh, the current economic climate. Green investing is becoming increasingly more popular with investors seeking both financial return and environmental good to bring about social change regarded as positive by proponents. Now, investors are becoming more ethical in where they put their money. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, it's pretty easy to feel positive about, you know, ethical investing. And uh, I feel pretty good about the agriculture and food sector. You know, it, we, we're trying to bring innovation to help feed the world sustainably. So um, that's an area that, uh, that I feel really comfortable that, you know, most, uh, most of what's going on is, uh, is going to, you know, in the agriculture and food sector anyway, is going to meet those criteria on, uh, you know, ethical and sustainability. Feeding the world more economically is one of the World Health Organization's primary goals for the next 30 years. Companies that are are addressing those needs will no doubt be successful. Are there any companies that you're watching right now in that particular arena? Yeah, I, I, um, I love some of the larger companies uh, that are doing well. Um, uh, The John Deere's and the Corteva's, but I'm also really excited about some of the innovation coming out of, you know, some of the smaller public companies, uh, uh, AGI, Ag Growth International is really pushing hard into Mm -hmm. digital and, I'm excited about what they're trying to do. And then there's some really uh, smaller cap companies like Devron UAS that are innovating and, and growing and getting more and more farmers. Um, and then there's some really kind of cool tech like uh, bee vectoring technology. Uh, I, uh, you know, I like what they're trying to do, and I, I, I think those are kind of interesting companies. And then I'm really pleased uh, companies out of Saskatchewan, uh, Dot Autonomous Farming, uh, uh, the founder, Norbert Bojo, um, just had a really successful exit to uh, Raven Technologies and uh, just shows some of the homegrown talent and innovation can, um, you know, result in some pretty, uh, pretty interesting things. I also like a lot of research-driven companies that aren't public. Uh, uh, A&L Labs out of uh, London, Ontario is doing really well. And um, I'm on the board of uh, Vive Crop Protection, which is a startup out of U of T, and um, doing some really cool things. And then I like uh, some of the cannabis companies that, you know, maybe stayed under the radar, like JC Green, and they've just been building a nice solid business uh, 
uh, and building customers and working on their production. So, um, yeah, there's so many neat companies. That's kind of why I'm having so much fun with Roundhouse or RH Accelerator is um, just trying to, you know, people have to eat and we're just trying to uh, uh, bring innovation to uh, create some of those markets. As we're entering a bear market, countercyclical stocks are really the ones to look for in these economic conditions. Joe, can you expand on that for those of our listeners who aren't that familiar with the term? Yeah, it's pretty hard to pretty hard to nail countercyclical, but uh, for me, um, you know, there's some steady eddies, and and uh, you know, I think food, some of these things, you know, they don't bounce quite as badly or or as uh, you know, as much in, uh, you know, in, in the crises. So I suspect we're going to see as we come out of this, you know, some of the food companies that, you know, that have been, uh, you know, maybe not in favor when there's a lot of tech and, and interesting, uh, things going on, but, you know, they're all of a sudden the profits and their, their business have grown through, you know, through some of these bear, uh, you know, bear markets. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I'd be looking at food companies, um, anybody that's kind of has a hedge like farmland, um, you know, some of those things, they're, they're pretty steady and I suspect they'll be, they'll be interesting right now. As the agritech and agribusiness sector gains more and more traction internationally, where do you see the opportunities from an investment standpoint? Yeah, I'd be excited about agri-food because, you know, I've, I've been on a number of board calls here the last few weeks and, it appears our sector has been less disrupted. Um, and so farmers are still farming. So the seed companies, the crop protection companies, they're all in play. They're all, uh, you know, their, their sales are, are moving forward. There's been some disruption, but it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been as drastic as some of the sectors that are just, you know, being shut right down. And I think what's going to happen is when things kind of become come back to our new normal and there's less disruption, those companies are going to have pretty interesting uh, performance metrics. And so I think they're going to draw a lot of capital. Um, and that'll also push, you know, some of the innovative companies to, uh, you know, they just kind of will sail right through, um, keep growing, even though, you know, the marketplace has been, uh, and the economy as a whole has been really beat up. Um, I think the agri-food and the agri-food innovation sector could potentially come flying through on the other side. What do you think we should be watching for in the upcoming months, Joe? The thing that I'm watching is just the, the volatility in the actual commodities, uh, the agricultural commodities, energy commodities. I think that's going to be really volatile. And so I've been telling, you know, my, uh, you know, my customers, clients, partners, um, unless you really have to sell, you know, you might want to just, Batten down the hatches and, and hold because, uh, you know, fundamentals, I think, long term are fine. It's just the market is really volatile right now and, you know, hard to predict. So uh, I think volatility is going to be with a capital B the next few months, I think, anyways. Well, finally, Joe, if there's anything that I've overlooked and you'd like to tell our investor audience, the floor is open to you. Well, thank you very much for the, the opportunity. And, yeah, I'm really enthusiastic about, you know, the potential of ag and food tech. So I encourage people to take a few minutes and do some research on some of these companies. It's a, it's a large sector that's probably not been very good at promoting itself. And I think uh, when the dust all settles in the new economy, uh, uh, there's going to be great opportunities for, you know, homegrown companies and, and startups. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, if people are interested in chatting about it, I'm always keen and very passionate about the sector. They can, you know, find me on LinkedIn or Twitter and, uh, or you can, they can follow us at, uh, uh rhaccelerator.com. So, uh, I'm happy to help and I'll give you my opinion. I, uh, you know, just, uh, just trying to be helpful and productive these days. Well, great stuff, Joe. Thanks again for joining us. We have been speaking with Joe Dales. He is the CEO of RH Accelerator. We'd like once again to thank Joe for sharing uh, his helpful and insightful information about the agri-tech industry with our podcast listeners and audience. Once again, for Stockhouse Media, I'm Dave Jackson. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder to follow us on social media at Stockhouse for the latest updates on all your favorite public companies in North America. 
For more in-depth coverage, industry news, and to connect with our active investor community, you can visit our website at stockhouse.com. Also, don't forget to visit our new and improved Stockhouse Deal Room on site for unique and exclusive private placement opportunities only available on stockhouse.com. 